Ready? What's up, everybody? Sean, Tom, Bobby, and Tammy here with the Live to Roll live stream. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about the importance of health and exercise and uh, just keeping your overall fitness, especially in your recovery after spinal cord injury. It's super important for your overall health and everything. Um, so, yeah, just real quick introduction. I'm Sean, C5, C6, quadriplegic, uh, hurt 16 years ago. And um, yeah, that's just, that's it for now. Go ahead, uh, Tom. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Tom Conway. Uh, you guys don't recognize me. Um, I'm a 27. I'm a quad that quadriplegic, lives in LA. I'm C5, C6, just like Sean. I've been paralyzed for 23 years. And uh, yeah. Cool, Bobby, you want to go ahead? Or Tammy, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Tammy, go ahead. Hi guys, I'm Tammy. Um, I'm a C4, C5 quad. I am 29, and I was injured through a car accident uh, 12 years ago. Awesome. I mean, not awesome, but thank you. <laughs> Bobby, go ahead. Yeah, I'm Bobby Rohan. I was hurt 31 years ago. I'm a C5, C6 quad. I was hurt in a bicycle accident uh, while training to become a professional bike rider back in the old days of uh, Lance Armstrong and all them and it was just kind of a freak accident so I used to do a lot of athletics and uh, triathlons and then moving on to wanting to become a professional bike, uh, bike rider yeah that's so real quick Bobby I remember hearing a story uh, when I first was injured about you that you had got a fake ID so that you could ride in adult triathlons like, is that true? <laughs> no, no, not that. Um, oh, okay. Not a, fa not a fake ID. Actually, my mom had to beg the promoters of a half Ironman triathlon because they would only let uh, 18 and over race. And at that time, I was 16 years old. Okay. And she submitted some of my times of my triathlon so that he'll be out in training with the professional athletes for a month prior to your race and they decided to let me in nice Crazy. yeah that's so cool yeah so i knew you were a really hardcore athlete um like always and you're the first quad that i ever met that was in a manual chair you don't even use any power assist anything you're just just a straight manual chair um every day so that's super impressive um and so that's why yeah this is i thought this is a really cool panel to have on here um tammy also does a whole bunch of cool stuff on she has an instagram she's the resilient quad i'm actually rocking her shirt too right now <laughs> um but she does a whole bunch of stuff too with like adaptive yoga and different things and she shows all kinds of cool little workouts that she's doing at home on her own um so i invited her to to talk about some of that kind of stuff too um Real quick, I'll just kind of go through some of the stuff I do. You know, I do uh, pushing in my rugby chair is one of my main things I like to do for one of my like one of the best workouts I get, especially for cardio and everything. It just really gets the blood pumping. But any type of pushing in a manual chair is good. Um, and then I also a couple times a week work out with my wrist weights, doing arm weights. Uh, I used to work out at a gym more, but right now pretty limited to just doing that right now. But it does enough to keep me in shape and healthy. Um, and it helps a lot. So that's just one, that's what my basic like weekly regimen is right now. Um, if any of you guys wanna share kind of what you do regularly anymore or you know, um, what you're starting to do, work out and stuff. Uh, yeah, whoever Kenny, what's your, what's your program? What do you do? Uh, my name is very I push in my chair twice a week for cardio. And I make sure that it's not just my arm, it's, you know, channeling my back and core and like really bringing my shoulder back because, you know, we kind of punch when we sit. So that opening up my back is really drawing my core, core forward. Um, uh, in my manual chair, I do punches, I do punches, um, over the head, like raises. And I drill a hook to the wall on top of a mirror and I do resistance stand pulls. And, uh, so that's five a week, okay? And the three other days, I call in between workouts is where I do core workout, um, like I do crunches in my bed and a lot of seated balancing stuff. And 
yeah, more yoga stuff so I can uh, be with my body, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Is there some static coming through on Tammy's mic? Or is it just me? Uh, there is a little Wait, bit. I, like, some static on the background. I'm wondering. Yeah, like, I know it's all good. Um, yeah, there's a little bit, but you can still hear. I mean, I can't. I don't know if uh, if someone wants to yeah, comment. No, I can, I just, yeah, I just can't. I'll call myself the lazy quad of the group. Uh, no, uh, not entirely true. Uh, I, had, I don't know. I've had lots of different experiences with you know, like physical activity and exercise. You know, as a disabled individual growing up, initially, you know, I was four when I was first hurt. So, I, you know, I was just doing PT, PT and OT. That was like what I did for the first few years. Um, then, you know, got out of PT. Uh, you know, my mom kind of took over the PT regimen. Um, but the thing that I started to do was uh, Taekwondo. I did, like, Taekwondo for 10 years, uh, which was fun. Like, I had an awesome instructor who, like, modified forms for me and, you know, like, enabled me to participate, you know, equally with everybody. And uh, that was uh, probably the main way I stayed active, like, throughout my adolescence. You know, just learning to, like, isolate my muscles and, you know, like, move what muscles I could. Um, the... You know, main thing that I think all of you guys are in manual chairs, right? Yeah. Are you in a manual chair, Tammy, yeah. or do you use a power chair? I, uh, I use power most of the time. Okay, um, so um, I in early on. Like, I was only in a manual chair for the first, like, three or four years, and then I started using a power chair pretty much full-time. I still have my manual chair um, that I get out and push it and take places. Okay. With the manual chair. Um, but, um, you know, I never really use that exercise activity uh, growing up. Um, yeah, I just pretty much did everything for my power chair. Uh, nowadays, I when I first moved to SoCal, I started going to a gym at CSUN. They had an adaptive gym that um, I took advantage of while I was there. A bunch of modified equipment, which is kind of like striking gold wherever you live. You know, finding a place like that. So I was really lucky. Um, but the last few years, I um, haven't done much outside of the... Uh, you know, activities that participate with Triumph, you know, the uh, adaptive rec that we do uh, regularly or did before uh, this transition to new corona times. Oh, yeah. uh, right. But I, I have wrist weights at home that I use, um, usually like three to three to five days a week, depending on, you know, how I feel, what's going on. Um, and then uh, recently my uh, sister and I are like starting to go on walks and I'm getting in my manual chair and pushing, you know, a couple miles. Um, but outside of that, no particular regimen, but a uh, big part of, like, my physical health and physical activity is uh, my independent living, I think, you know, like the transferring and stuff that I do regularly and you know, the stuff that I do throughout the day, you know, I mean, moving my body, adjusting my clothes, you know, getting things done around my apartment and stuff, like chores, whatever it may be, um, you know, like it can be a uh, you need very physically draining, you know, you just, um, you know, the muscles we got, you guys know how that all is, you know, uh, and sometimes that can be enough, you know, that can be a workout in itself, um, definitely, I think. Yeah, I know it can be pretty hard just take care of yourself, doing all that. Yeah, it's exhausting. It's a lot of work, every movement is like, you know, ten times heavier than it should be. Yeah, I mean, you know, even something like cooking a meal, you know, by the time you get done, you know, Leaning over, stirring everything, flipping everything, moving all the pots and pans and whatever it is. Like, you're like exhausted by the time you get done with it. Like, well, at least I burned those calories before I get to eat all that. <laughs> Doing small little stuff like that is actually a really good workout. Anytime you're trying to do any little independent, because you're leaning, you're trying to use little muscles in your back, you're having to like adjust. You're, it's, it's, it's hard, the little small little movements and stuff, like sort of cooking and things like that. Like, it's, it is a workout. Yeah. So. You know, a lot of people like typically think like exercise is just like lifting weights, you know, pushing stuff, but you know, fine motor, you know, especially things like for us, exercising the muscles in our hands and our wrists and, you know, arms that just, you know, enable us to do the little things is like super important. Yeah. All right, Bobby, what are you um, doing, right? Are you still doing as much daily uh, as you used to, uh, or what are you still doing now? <sighs> Obviously, back when you knew me, I was, I started out like kind of hardcore. I 
I got lucky. I went, you know, as soon as after six months after my injury, I went to a center that's no longer around called the Walker Institute. And it wasn't about uh, walking or anything. It was more about me getting independent. And I got a gym and uh, physical therapy, OT, weights, pushing my wheelchair or learning how to push my wheelchair for a total of eight months, every day, eight hours a day. And that was perfect for me because of uh, coming back from a, uh, a, a exercise or a fitness background or athlete, a uh, serious athlete, and uh, it was just it fit right in. So I got a lot of that. And then shortly after that was done, you know, it's no more PT and always told people, you know, PT is my life, you know, just trying to get up, trying to get in my car, trying to transfer and dress and all that good stuff. That's, you know, that's my PT all the time. Uh, but right away I started playing, I think uh, two years after my injury or maybe a year and a half after my injury, I started playing uh, wheelchair sports, rugby. And I uh, was one of the uh, founders of the Northridge Knights in Northridge, California. That's what so I, I went back. Yeah, when I went back to my rehab, I told my rec therapist that I want to play that sport called rugby. And she's like, okay, we got some money that we can put towards the team. Let's put one together. And we started playing. Wow. And I started playing rugby, got pretty good right away. And I think it was the next year I was already going off to Canada to play on the all-star team where I met a good friend of mine who's still is friend today, Dean McCabe, and we played on the same team and a couple other all-star um, games, played it for uh, 25 years. I did take a two-year hi uh, hiatus of uh, uh, when I got married and moved to Orange County, and I was like, oh, it's going to be a far drive for me, an hour and a half to go practice on a Wednesday. It was, it, you know, wasn't going to work out, and then the they practices moved to Sunday, so I went back and started playing for the Knights again and then found a team down here and played two more seasons with them. And then kind of after 25 years, uh, kind of put it up on the shelf and was happy about all the accomplishments and the team. And it was just beating my body up and uh, took a big toll on me. And so I said, no more. But in before I was snow skiing, water skiing, um, always trying to hit the gym, going to the gym. For a long time, I was going to an adaptive gym in Orange County called Goodwill Fitness Center. And that place was, you know, tailored to me. And I sat there every day and worked out for, you know, uh, two to three hours and got in probably in the best shape in my life. And then I got a job, uh, I guess a real job. Uh, not a part-time or not a something I wanted to take serious at a rehab hospital. And so I moved to that and didn't work out as much and actually got burned out of the gym. I didn't like being in uh, indoors all the time. I wanted to be outdoors. And so that's when I just kind of decided, you know what I love? When I'm pushing my wheelchair on the beach, it feels like a bicycle to me in some small way. So I would sit there and push, you know, six to eight miles every other day. And wow. that's, you know, that was my workout. So I did that for a long time and loved it. And then uh, I have to admit, this COVID thing took me for a big spin and I stopped going to the beach because we had to. And I was doing working from home, teleworking and loved it. Um, really immersed myself in work and got up at 8.30, started on the computer, don't finish until 5, you know, some days, and I'm just like, God, I love this, I love this. I didn't have to drive anywhere. Well, I didn't, you know, I did start going to take walks at the end of the day with my wife until I forgot how to push my own wheelchair because then I broke my finger. My finger got <laughs> caught in my spoke, oh, and yeah. I was like, yeah, I was like, snap, and I looked, and I'm like, oh, man, and I kind of 
put it back in place real quick and I was like <laughs> it turned black and blue and it was probably broken or dislocated or but I, you know, I never went I was like I'm not going to the hospital with this thing going on and uh, so I really was I felt it I was you know if I run to do a doctor's appointment I felt it like I am weak yeah and so starting last week you know I found out that um, a great website on YouTube called adapt to perform he does a live video up. for a half an hour in the morning, uh, Ben King, and I do. I signed up. I pay my ten dollars that you don't really even have to, just so I can commit myself. And I do his uh, half an hour workout. That's just perfect for me, right? You know, right now. And uh, I can't wait for tomorrow because tomorrow is something up your alley, Tammy. It's yoga, and I'm like, okay, okay yoga. <laughs> you know, I don't have to do any weights, but you know, I'm I'm getting into that and. Uh, uh, eventually I'll build on where I'll do a lot more of his workouts and ordered uh, some hand weights that better suited for me and that's what I'm going to you know I need to get back into shape and eventually I just ordered new hand rims so I'll have a little more grip to start pushing again I kind of wore out my hand uh, hand rims to the extreme so they're all torn up and you know even pushing around the house lately it's been hard so once I get those I'll get back to the park Rob, do you use rib grips? Do I use what? Rib grips. The um, it's like rubber around the rim of your uh, yeah, your we, uh, wheelchair. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, I tried those just because when it goes over the rim, it was just a little bit too thick uh, for my liking that I like. So I push yeah. with um, it, they're called push blacks, and That's you can really get them good. from I think it's. Uh, uh, Vesco now they used Push Black we used to be its own company but now you can get them from Vesco I did not and know that was, that's what I like I have Push what Blacks on my rugby chair they're really good really grippy push rims like it is really yeah. tacky to your hands and it doesn't tear your hands up too bad either um, I yeah. borrowed Earl's gloves and Earl's gloves had this really sticky tacky stuff it doesn't stick to me, but like if you put it on a wheelchair, if you on the rim of it, it really like adheres your hand to it. So what is yeah, it? those are those are great gloves. They're made by a company in Fresno, or actually in Australia, uh, Rhino Wheelchairs. But the company they do have a U.S. division in uh, Fresno, Melrose, and so right, you can yeah. get a whole bunch of different styles for the push uh, gloves that are really tacky with the. Does yours have the red rubber? It comes with it. I'm sorry? Um, the tackiness comes with the gloves. It's not something he just added or sprayed on. No, it right. comes on the glove. Yeah, it's sticky. The rubber sticks uh -huh. really good. Uh, hey, okay. Bobby, that's it. She mentioned Earl. If it, if it's so, oh, sorry. I was just going to mention she's friends with Earl Bowser, and then Kat was her PT. You know, you know who his wife is, right? Uh, so, yeah, that's also how I know Tammy. So, Tammy. Yeah. Mutual okay. <laughs> My chair right now, um, Earl lent me his rugby or his wheelchair, his extra wheelchair when I first started push I couldn't even push a chair. But he lent me it so that I could practice and create my fundraising video and uh, and his gloves. So, you know, definitely a role model and inspiration and a great friend. <laughs> That's cool. Oh. That's good to get pushing in the rugby chair too, or in like a sports chair like that. It's so much easier to push than a regular manual chair. You can get a great workout. You don't have to worry about flipping it or falling out of it really. You're strapped. Yeah. It's just, that's what I've told a couple other newer quads I've been trying to help out around here. Like if we can get them in the rugby chair to push, it's just a so much better. Like Tom knows, you've been in the rugby chairs like, and you're not like, you can push so much faster. Like I've seen you cruising it's up so the court, like fun. you're moving. It's like you know? crazy. Like, so I just, just started playing like really this last year and going to some practices and stuff. But like it's a trip, like being like so bucketed, but like really secure. And they strap you in like around your chest and stuff, right? So you can just really leap into the wheels and kind of put all your weight into moving around the court. And yeah, those like, those chairs just glide, like it's cool. Yeah, I, I really I, prefer pushing in that kind of chair. Sorry, Tanya. You guys pressure sores because, like, the dump is so... You know how you sit so, like, deep within the chair? I tried it once. I met up with Sky, but I wasn't strong enough to push it. My left arm was so weak at the time. 
So uh, I got in it, but it was I, I just wasn't ready. I mean, it's definitely something you got to be careful of because I mean, any any different chair, any different surface, like for more than an hour, you know, you're at risk if you know it's not right for you, and that could be as true for a rugby chair as any you know any other chair. So you know, that's where you really pay attention to your body and make sure someone's helping you shift your weight. You know, if it's difficult for you and that different kind of chair and stuff, you know, you just it's a workout chair. It's not the all day every day chair. <laughs> And then, so for those that don't obviously have rugby chairs or sports chairs to push around in, let, we, let's try to talk about some other things, you know. Um, Tammy, actually, if you want to talk a little bit about some of the yoga, I actually did adaptive yoga twice now at some of our Triumph events, and I really liked it. Yeah. I thought it was really cool. And it is, it's hard to hold those positions and hold, like, it's not like it's easy or anything. It's not like, like, yoga is a workout. So if you want to mention any, if you want to talk about what some of the stuff you do with that, like, that's, that'd be cool. Yeah. I was, you know, plateauing with all my workouts, and I've always wanted to try yoga. I've never done yoga in my life, so I asked my sister. So it was a very makeshift, you know, at home yoga, and she piggyback she piggybacked me to the floor. And the first time, I had zero clue what I was doing. I couldn't gauge my back. You know that feeling where your back is there, but you don't know what to do with it, um, and. Uh, she taught me like how to ground. You know, when you ground, you kind of let everything settle. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with grounding. The, the, um, the general term. Yeah, uh, Robert. Yeah, the yoga specific term. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but like grounding has helped me connect to uh, quiet my body when I'm struggling to do something, and then regroup and uh, when I let my body settle down I'm able to connect to my lower body you know and uh, just quiet all the noise quiet all the nerve pains and then regroup and refocus and channel to my muscles so um, yeah basically it has really helped me channel my muscles in a different way that's not like vigorous workouts you know especially below my injury yeah I mean one of the most important things with like uh, quadriplegia paraplegia the spinal cord injury in general, when you lose, you know, certain things like learning how to balance yourself again, learning how to move, you know, learning how to move in a safe way, in a comfortable way, in a way that, you know, takes full advantage of the muscles that you have, you know, isolating what you got, you know, using what you got. And I personally haven't done a lot of yoga. Um, my sister's a yoga nut, um, but um, I do, I, I can see how I mean, that could be an immense benefit in learning how to balance your body and move your body. And like you said, like, become aware, you know, aware of, you know, the different parts of your body. And it's funny, like, something that's kind of just happened over time for me, you know, over 23 years, like, learning, you know, how to feel my legs, you know, even though I can't feel my legs, you know. Um, and it's like a trip saying that, but, you know, learning how to move, like, moving them, moving with them, like, you, you can sense it. You can, you know, learn how they, how they feel now, you know. Yeah, exactly. I was just talking to my caregiver about that today. When I first got paralyzed, I, I don't know if you guys felt the same thing that I felt. It's like weird tingles and vibrations. Like I'm staring at my leg and I feel weird vibrations. And it, I didn't have that mind-body connection just yet because I didn't start physical therapy yet. But uh, even when I first started physical therapy, I had no idea what I was connecting to, what I was doing. But slowly, the more you move your body, it kind of wakes up and you learn how to connect with your body in a different way, you know, and um, back then, I didn't know I could feel my legs until I was sitting under the table and someone kicked me, and I was like, did you just kick me? And they're like, dude, like, how did you know? I was like, I don't know, but now I can gauge which foot needs, like, ankle flexion, stretching, and do you know what I mean? Like, over time, it just, uh, yeah. you, you have a yeah. different way. You learn your body, you learn your, you know, it's, you find that new normal, you learn your body and your new body. Um, and I think everybody goes through it to a certain degree you know, after recovering. But, you know, something Sean and I were just talking about yesterday um, was the, important, uh, the importance of exercising after your injury and activating, you know, even the parts of your body that aren't, you know, necessarily can work and move. Um, the importance of that, like cellular innervation, you know, like activating those parts, those, you know, nerves, you know, those parts of your body and giving them some, you know, activity because... I mean, you're not going to start walking again tomorrow. Um, yeah. I mean, generally, if you've been paralyzed for, you know, a decade or more. Um, but um, there's still, you know, incredible potential for, you know, your nerves to 
change over time and for you, your body to change. And the best way for it to change in a positive direction is activating those things and moving your legs, moving your body, even if it's not, you know, like um, at an exercise facility, you know, get on the ground, bicycle your legs around, roll around on the floor, but, you know, move and wake up and, you know, do things that, you know, like make you feel good and make you aware of, you know, your body. Uh, I think it's so, so, so important for recovery, you know, as as long as you're, you know, recovering, which is, you know, forever, right? <laughs> I, I def, that was one of the points I wanted to bring up. So thank you, Tom. That was, uh, yeah, dude, just how much it can really help your recovery uh, from the start of your injury. The more you're working out and doing things, the more you're going to be able to get back and retain. Like, you might not be able, to, you're not going to maybe be able to fully recover and everything, you know, but like to get your maximum potential, you need to work out and do it. If you just sit on your butt and hope and wait like just for magic to like all of a sudden you'll start to move stuff that it's not gonna so work <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, that was so like my naive like thought in the beginning like I was hope hoping I was like the exception that something would like you know something would happen for me but I, I wasted four years and right. that I wish I could have gone back in because I think when you move early on like you, it's so. I think it's really important to like uh, work out. I mean, it's that, it's that saying kind of like you don't use it, you lose it, uh, and that's really true for muscles. Like muscle weakness, you know, like once it gets to a certain point, and it happens faster than people think. My dad, you know, experienced an accident like earlier this year, and he was in the hospital for just a few weeks and moving slowly for two or three months, but the muscle loss was profound like I couldn't believe it and you know it was going to take him twice as long or more to get back to where he was before now I mean you imagine like you know spending a year you know in bed rest recovery or you know living an activity uh, more than one I mean what that does um but the important thing is is yes yeah, started moving you got up and you started going um and you know it's like Everybody's got to go through it. Everybody has to go through that recovery, right? You get to that mental point where, you know, they're they're ready to exercise. They're ready to move. They're ready to learn their new body and figure it out. It's, it does and, take you know, that's, that's, quick for everyone. That's, that's how I, you know, that's what happened to me. Just recently, I lost a lot of muscle and a lot of strength just because I stopped doing my normal routine. Stop pushing. Stop pushing around the hospital, you know, that I worked at. Stop, you know, just staying at home on the computer, just like anybody else staying at home watching TV, you know. And, you know, to get back, it, it, it can be real tough. And something that I wanted to talk about or bring up is, you know, it's hard for us to do it on our own. But you have to start somewhere, you know, start little steps. You know, I chose uh, the platform of going on YouTube and a half an hour a day. Knowing I'm a, I'm a dude that likes to work out three hours. That's just what I love. I, I, if I don't work out two to three hours, I don't feel like my day's complete or my workout's complete, really. And so I wanted to do that, you know, but I, I can't do that now. So I had to start somewhere. And I'll do that, and then maybe I'll do a video again. And then maybe I'll do more of a video at the end of the day. But I got to start somewhere. And the other thing I want to bring up, bring up is uh, have a partner. Be accountable. It's always great when you can say, if I text Sean, Sean, I'm going to do my workout on Zo uh, YouTube today. Join us. You know, it makes us accountable that Sean might be like, all right, I'm going to do it with you. And, and you know, you, you feel excitement. But by doing that something online where, you know, I message him, I'm like, I'm here for a good workout. And he, he's always like, great, Robert, welcome. You know, and it's like, I feel like I, I'm at a gym. I feel like the instructor said, all right, way to go. You know, I'm, let's, let's get started. And you, you feel like you're doing it with somebody and not on your own. Because I can stay here all day with what I have, wrist weights and uh, my active gloves and put on something and just work out. It's like, mm, so yay, one, two. But when I'm live with people or talking to someone saying oh let's do it together or when I used to go pushing and I'm going to start again soon with a good buddy of mine you know we do it together and he's sometimes slower than I am but I don't care 
I'm like, I'd rather do it with somebody. What you said, Bobby, about baby steps, too, I think is so important. It was 16 years after my injury when I did my first independent transfer, uh, you know? And that was like, I mean, I don't know, I just, I have an incredible family, and, you know, I always had help around, and it was just something that, you know, I didn't take for granted, but, you know, just relied on them for. But, you know, when I realized I wanted to move out and, you know, what it was going to mean to live independently, you know, like I had to start literally from ground zero. And, you know, that first transfer, I think, took me, you know, an hour to move, you know, two feet from my chair to my bed and, you know, like get my legs out. Um, but, you know, the next time it only took me 45 minutes and, you know, like a month in, you know, I was doing it in five. And now, you know, like I'm going to do six, seven, eight, nine, ten transfers a day, hop in and out of bed, my chair, whatever, you know, just like quick 30 seconds here and there. Um, easy. But, you know, it was a decade of you know, working and learning and doing it and building those muscles and, you know, just taking those baby steps and figuring it out. Um, so, you know, I think for anybody out there who, you know, feel like, you know, feels like, you know, it's just, it's so hard to even get started sometimes because it can feel so daunting to, you know, just be frustrated doing little things or, you know, how hard it could be to spend an hour trying to get out of your chair, you know, with your mom and dad standing in front of you waiting to catch you when you fall. Like, but take that first step you'll feel so much better once you do it. And then once, you know, you get that feeling, like that, you know, bug, that rush, that endorphin kick, you know, that freedom, you know, for, you know, having done it yourself, like you will want to do it again and you want to push yourself to do it faster and do it better. So, you know, it's really important to take that first step and don't become intimidated uh, or disappointed, you know, at slow progress because it's slow for everybody. It's just the way it is. And also to go back on um, Bobby's note on the like having a park partner or anything, like Tom right now is starting to push with his sister who's just walking. But she was saying yesterday she's doing like lunges while he while he's pushing. So like they they're working out together. You know he's working out with his sister. Like he doesn't have to be another person in a chair, another quad, another whatever. You can just work out with a family member, a friend, or whatever. You know like just kind of adapt, do something that keeps you both active. Um, or connect with somebody virtually, like Bobby was doing on YouTube. Or um, this I'm is actually, one of us. We'll yeah. invite you to a workout. <laughs> so I'm actually also doing, and I'm gonna put in the description. I forgot. The last few weeks, I've been running quad workouts on Zoom for this Rise Fitness website, um, who's run by another quad um, out here in Orange County. And right now, we're actually looking for quads just to uh, join up. We're gonna do one tomorrow at noon. If anybody wants to, they can message me. Um, we can. I can send you the link um, and we're basically just doing little zoom groups like Bobby's doing on YouTube you can have your cam on you cannot and we're all just working out together I set up like a 25 minute workout and we do like a 25 30 minute workout um, and then we can all talk afterwards of questions and stuff like that too so it's kind of cool it makes it like a group atmosphere and um, you know it's kind of like more of a it, it does keep you more accountable like because you you know like I'm trying to make sure the workout's good for everybody else, but then they're all there together working out. So, you know, it just makes sure it makes everybody work a little harder. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that I also want to mention too, in, um, in terms of getting out there with other individuals, um, you know, participating in groups. Right now, it's all virtual, um, but you know, six months, twelve months, whenever things open back up, um, we participate in a nonprofit foundation. Um, we're ambassadors for uh, this foundation called Triumph Foundation. Bobby and Sean and I, I'm sure you probably heard about it, Tammy. Um, if not, we'll fill you in. Um, but they host here in SoCal uh, adaptive rec events, you know, throughout the year. Um, you know, so everyone down here in the greater Los Angeles area, you know, is le so lucky to be able to benefit from that. But, you know, find, you know, your local SCI group and, you know, there are people, the groups of, you know, uh, spinal cord injury individuals everywhere. Um, you know, working out, surfing, going to the beach, you know, whatever it is, wherever they are locally. Um, and so that can be an incredible resource just to reach out to, you know, other people in your situation, you know, learn how they're working out, you know, dive in. Like our um, awesome community is, you know, the, one of the most welcoming and friendly in the world. So if you haven't reached out yet and you're thinking of it, please do not hesitate. On that note, too, um, 
if you like doing stuff like we do with Triumph and going and meeting newer injury people and then maybe helping them once they're out of rehab and like kind of pushing them. Tammy does the same stuff up up uh, in NorCal. She's doing the same things. She's going and meeting, uh, visiting patients and stuff like that. So like if you can give back to your community in that way, that could be the first step for somebody to get out there working out, you know, like a newer injury or something like that um, that might need a little extra motivation or help. and. You could possibly be that person for somebody if you know around the country uh, I, like, is... <laughs> Go ahead. I like um i think i'm so passionate about that because uh, i wish there was a me around when i got injured you know um all the things that i had to learn and do trials and tribulations up on my own um you know i i feel for those who don't have the resources or unfamiliar because it was very confusing for me, you know, and but I do take pride in everything that I had to learn on my own. And as for like, you know, I, I love that you guys are able to have rec, you know, wheelchair rec therapy uh, in SoCal. And uh, I, there isn't much around here, but I think uh, for me, I find comfort in being in my home because sometimes facilities are a little too cold and over stimulating for me, and it's uh, it can be a, a little overpriced and it's too rushed, you know, and I don't like feeling I have to rush to get in my workout in order to reap the benefits. So um, I'm very passionate about showing people how you can work out anywhere, especially in your own home. You know, like um, there's many things you can do, uh, do with like putting a hook in the wall and resistance bands and, you know, and uh, it's funny because on my list, I wrote down self accountability, you know, the benefits of working out. And you're very right, Robert, like uh, self-accountability is really important. And I think that's what exercising really teaches me. Uh, for me, what helps me be accountable is that I've always uh, wished I had consistent care and someone who was willing to work with me and help me enhance my life. And my caregiver is really wonderful, you know, after so many neglectful ones. Um, she's really wonderful about being open to help me with anything I need, you know. And uh, she has an OT background as well, so we, we, we work together to figure out how to enhance my life and so that I can share with the community. And, um, you know, Amazon is wonderful. We, I got injured around a time where there weren't many resources and many life hacks, you know, at the, you know, click of a button. And oh, Bobby, shipping. Bobby knows about that. He was injured when there was nothing for her closet. Oh, uh-huh. Thank God. Uh, Take my first wheelchair in the background, yeah. you know. <laughs> Are you serious? No. He's not that old. I as well have for some of those things they had back in the day. Oh my gosh, I totally fell for that one. Uh, but um, the self accountability is like definitely a big thing. But, um, you know, I think the flip side of that um, is like making yourself accountable is like enabling yourself for success, just like you were saying. You know, it's so important to, you know, have the right people around you that can, you know, set you up the right way or help you the right way so that, you know, you feel good or okay to work out, but also, you know, like getting yourself the right tools, getting yourself, you know, into the right environment. Um, for some people, that might be a PT environment. You know, like for me, PT, and, you know, my mom taught me this because she asked the PT, you know, when we were there, it was like, teach me how to do this so, you know, in like six months when we're done, you know, with you, like, we can do it at home. And that's what, you know, they should be there for is to, you know, teach you the skills to carry this forward and, you know, like enable yourself to grow, you know, more independently. Um, so setting yourself up for success is super important. Yeah. So should I bring up should I bring up another point of something that's really important, not only when we think about exercise is doing it the right way, but another thing is it's your diet. Yeah, you know, I and to that uh, so. nutrition and diet is I know you had it on your list and I didn't want to didn't want to skip that because it's huge yeah. what you put yeah. into your body is going to make all the difference. You you can work out all you want, but unless you're putting in the right uh, fruits, vegetables and the right protein, yeah. you're not going to you're not going to function right, you know. You're going to like, oh, I had a great week, but now I just can't get anything going. Yeah. And it's probably because you're out of gas, you're not fueled right, you're not hydrated right. And, you know, and I had to, I had to learn that. You know, luckily I got by at uh, an early age when I was doing those Ironmans or half Ironmans. And 
triathlons and cycling that I could wake up and eat a, a box of uh, Captain Crunch. You know, my body was okay with that at the time, you know. But if I try to eat one, you know, ounce of Captain Crunch today, my body would be like, are you kidding me? You know, hello, you know, too much sugar, too much this, you know. If I sat there and went to, you know, I, I can't even enjoy a In-N-Out burger anymore. It's just sodium, uh, you know. It's just what you put in your body is going to make you feel great. And, you know, I get made fun of at work, and they're like, that's your lunch? Those are your snacks, your almonds? Your your fruit or your vegetable, and then now you're gonna have a salad. I mean, we're hello. Where are your chips, Bobby? Well, what, um, can I ask? Like, can we all share what our our diet is like? You know, and what what yeah. we so that everyone's kind of aware or have ideas. You know. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Robert. I, I I'm interested in your diet. In my diet, um, yeah. you know, it's it's not a diet. It's just, you know, what I do is I just try to put in what's good for me. I, you know, I am blessed with a great cook, my wife, oh. and a great person that prepares my meal. I know back in my young days in my 20s when before marriage that it was way easier going to uh, Wendy's and Jack in the Crack than it was to sit there and figure out what can I make here on my own yeah. or what can my aid prepare me for the week, you know, and it, it just made more sense, yeah. you know, but once I hit 30, I realized, number one, now I get lucky that way, but number two, my body can't handle that. My bowel program wasn't right. My energy wasn't right. Um, I just didn't feel right, you know, and so, you know, when I eat, I eat, you know, a protein bar in the morning, nothing big. I Some people can't eat that much in the morning. I, I, I think I see a kind of a, a common thread with quads. We're just not big eaters in the morning. You know, it's just yeah, it's like, oh, uh, to start eating. So my lunch is a, a salad and, you know, with chicken or, you know, I'll eat a sandwich, you know, a little bit of bread, you know, as long as I keep it wheat bread and I have a sandwich, turkey sandwich, and uh, with a little bit of cheese, some snacks. I'm a, I love to eat small meals throughout the day, some snacks, some almonds, a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables uh, this morning was uh, blueberries with pineapple and a power uh, a power bar, you know, a quick bar. And then it was a salad for lunch. And then tonight, you know, will be, you know, something probably with chicken. I'm not, I don't cut out meat. I love my meat. I love chicken. I love pork tenderloin. And when I feel low on energy, I, a good steak. I buy a good little steak. Um, usually real lean and uh, I can eat a whole steak and I just feel like oh, I got blood and I got energy protein you know I eat that protein you know a lot of potatoes and a lot of rice and a lot of broccoli and a lot of um, asparagus and um, Brussels sprouts so I love Brussels sprouts so I'm in Bobby's department where I'm lucky like I live independently but I have a um, a sister that lives uh, like about half an hour away, and um, we meal prep every week. Um, okay. She'll come over, um, we'll cook, and I'm mean, we'll just like we'll get real vegetables, real stuff. I mean, I last night um, she came by like we did, I green beans and carrots, um, you know, sautéed with scalloped potatoes, um, and you know, like small pork, you know, like decent portion on the scalloped potatoes. Um, don't overdo the butter or the pot- or the papas. And, you know, like, eat the veggies, and, um, you know, that's it. And then we did, like, some jambalaya, like, squash for, you know, like, throughout the week, you know, just, like, easy, ready-to-heat-up meals. And, you know, like, mix it up all the time. But um, for a time when I first moved out, um, I, you know, started going to school, and I was on the meal plan at school, and I'd just go to the dining hall every day and eat this, you know, like, shitty prepared food. And, like, everything, you know, like, my body just, like, shut down. You know, like, first of all, I, like, stopped eating as much because, like, it just wasn't good food, um, you know, but it wasn't healthy for me. Like, it screwed up every part of my life, like, you know, my bladder health, my bowel, like, my bowel care, like, everything, you know, was just not okay and not happy. And, like, what is going on here? Like, what is this thing? And I started, like, buying food and, you know, like, preparing it at home. You know, Trader Joe's became my best friend. 
you know, like Amy's organic, you know, like frozen burritos that I could like heat up and stuff became my best friend. And, you know, like I just went shopping, you know, um, and found stuff that I could, I could do, you know, that would work for me. You know, it's like so easy when you're tired, you know, especially if you're out all day, you know, as a quad and just like doing your thing, you come home, you just do not have the energy to sit in front, you know, cook for 30 minutes or, you know, an hour and prepare dinner. It's so easy to Uber Eats or, you know, like go to a fast food place or whatever it is. But, you know, that's here's, here's like the thing. Set yourself up for success, right? Get those Trader Joe's for good frozen meals that you could, you know, heat up, you know, and that are healthy and, you know, decent tasting and stuff. And, you know, enable yourself to be, be you know, be good um, because it's really easy to fall into that trap. Um, you know, it's like, I. I got the excuse. I'm just going to go do it, you know? Self-discipline comes in. Um, but I don't have any particular diet. I'm not a morning eater. I, like, wake up. I do my one cup of coffee in the morning and my cup of black tea um, with, like, my daily fiber supplement. And, you know, the fiber supplement that I take to help with just, like, my digestion and stuff. It's a appetite suppressant, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Um, it just kind of makes me feel full. Um, but I usually never eat until afternoon. Um, and it's like I do a little little lunch or sometimes like it sounds um, a little weird and it's really important to make sure you do this healthy um, but intermittent fasting you know like I'll do one meal a day um, and it sounds wild you know I'll snack you know like early afternoon on you know like a good snack and then I'll have my dinner around 4 or 5 o'clock and that'll be it um, and you know I'm good for the day um, that you know, I mean, when I first moved out, living independently, like, helped contribute to this a lot, and, you know, starting to exercise, but, you know, I, I lost, like, 60 pounds, you know, just, like, not having, like, my mom and dad feeding me delicious buttery food at home all the time <laughs> and stuff, you know, like, making me fat, uh, but, you know, just getting, finding a routine that allowed me to feel energized and not feel low throughout the day, um, but also, you know, like, fit with my routine, you know, my bowel care, you know, my lifestyle, and, you know, like, how I felt, and, you know, I found something that stick, stuck, which was that, and, you know, I just kind of hung on to it, and, of course, I mix it up sometimes, you know, I, I like to treat myself, I think it's important for everybody to do that, and I love to eat, um, but, you know, moderation is key for everything, right? That's yeah. So I was going to say the moderation for me is key, like portion control. People always ask me why I don't have a quad gut, and that's what I tell them pretty much is like portion control. Uh, and I have a really fast metabolism, to be honest. Um, so I personally, I start my days with either oatmeal, eggs, or a smoothie, um, like a fruit smoothie with protein powder and stuff mixed into it. Um, and then I usually eat like a sandwich or something like that. Um, I usually eat a snack after that like some chips or uh, grapes or nuts or something um just some random i pretty much eat like every two to three hours i i'm constantly snacking through the day so then i'll eat dinner dinner's my biggest meal of the day i usually try to eat something good like you know meat potatoes like something good protein like a nice big meal and then i usually snack again a couple hours later and then maybe one more time before i go to bed <laughs> Uh, so I'm constantly putting food in myself. I'm just not putting a huge amount of it in. Just like slower, like small portions. I think that's so what's up? How about you, you? Huh? I said that's like grazing. You know, you're a grazer. That's why it's hard to like. <laughs> it, it you you maintain your weight that way. You know, that's good. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah. For me, in the morning, I learn to train myself to eat in the morning so I cheat I uh, shove everything into a smoothie I put a lot of kale because it's really I noticed I was constipated for a while and I you know it bothered me until I shoved a bunch of kale into my smoothie and you have the yogurt you have the berries and I found what's called nutso butter you can get at Costco it's packed with a lot of protein because there's seven different nuts in there with hemp seeds and flax seeds and it makes it taste good, you know? So it's like a, a yeah, it's with a huge smoothie in the morning. And then um, around noon is when, if I, especially on days when I'm working out, I eat a lot more protein and carbs. So I 
pulled over and don't get fatigued. You know, I get I get I get dizzy a lot during my workouts if I don't eat enough carbs. Yeah. And uh, for dinner, yeah, I try to eat a big meal at night because that's when I do my bowel program, and then I'll get hungry again, and I don't want to eat in bed. As a girl, you know, I gain weight easier, and I I do have a, unfortunately a quad belly, but. It is what it is, you know? And, um, yeah. Even I, Sean has a little quad belly. He claims, I mean, it might not be that visible, but he's got one. We all do. <laughs> yeah. So, I definitely do, but I know mine is not from food. It's from alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I like my glasses of wine, and uh, as everybody knows, so I like the... I like to sip on some vino, and there's a lot of sugar in that, so yeah. I know where mine is coming from. Yeah. If I snack at night, I try to choose things that are healthy, like uh, more protein or fruits, you know, but fruits still have sugar, but at least it's not, like, binging on chips and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I leave room for myself to splurge, you know. If I know I burned calories through, like, working out, like, I, I, I don't really, like, cut myself off completely and as Tom said like you know it's okay to treat yourself and just be mindful of your body type and um, yeah just like what causes you waking and I know it's hard to gauge your body type and how to um, stay conscious of your weight and diet well as a quad you know because our body kind of uh, reacts differently even when we eat a certain way and um, what not yeah, and, um, and it's okay to like have a pizza, have a juicy burger. You know, I mean, definitely earn that right to to do it. Just don't. It's not uh, all the time. Term. Exactly. You know, when you when you're gonna, you know, hey, if the only thing you're going out, you know, you're like, we're on the road. You know, like when I take a road trip, I gotta have McDonald's French fries. It's just something, you know, we, uh, yeah. my wife has to use the restroom all the time, so I'm like, uh, let's find a McDonald's so I can get some fries, you know, I just, I don't know, something about that salt that gets me going, you know, for the next couple hours, and, you know, but I wanted to say there are healthy fast foods out there, you know, you're not maybe going through the drive through but sometimes you can, you can get, you know, the plain chicken sandwich, you know, with, you know, that is grilled and not fried. And so there's more and more nowadays you're seeing places too. It's getting a lot easier to find real, legitimate, organic, healthy stuff that yeah. tastes good. You just have to yeah, make the right choice when you're at the fast food window. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like sometimes I, uh, a lot of times, especially when I was working out a lot, you know, and I was out the door and my wife's, you know, had to work a lot, you know, I'd say, I got, I got, I got lunch. Covered, and I would go to Flamboyant and pull up and say, "I'm going to place an order." But I'm right outside. Can you bring it out to my car? And they're like, um, "Okay." But then they got used to it. I'm like, "Hey, it's me. I'm in the I'm in the handicap. Can you bring out uh, the chicken with you know with all the veggies and brown rice and uh, extra green onions?" And no problem. Nice. Yeah, that's um, cool. Figuring stuff I, like that out. I, Sorry, Cammy. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> um, I was saying, can I bring up like the importance of like mental health where exercising and dieting is involved? You know, I think um, a lot of quads do struggle. I, I think whether you're abled or disabled, you know, um, mental health is so important and uh, not a lot of people are able to be aware of how their emotions and, you know, their mental health is going. And, um, I think exercising and um, eating right has really helped me a lot, especially um, exercising. Like when I was really depressed, um, what saved me was pushing at the mall every Tuesday. Like whether I was sad, I didn't want to go. You know, like nobody enjoys working out. Like the initial, like oh, I don't want to do it. You know, it's so easy to like get sucked in. And once you get your blood flowing. It feels so good. You know? Once you're done, you're like, oh, my God, I'm so glad that I did that. Like, I feel so good. Yeah, yeah I feel oh, so good. every time. Yeah. So um, I really, I think exercising really saved me for myself. And not only did it save me for myself, it, it built me up as a person, my life, my independence, you know. And just self-confidence, too, because when you believe in yourself, 
and you know nothing beats putting work into yourself whether it like work working on mental health or, or, or physical health you know um, I'm a big uh, advocate for um, you know therapy I finally caved and um, enrolled myself into therapy last year when I was extremely like depressed and suicidal over like you know over things like bottling up and um, I would just like to tell everyone that you know it's okay to go to therapy it's what safe you like you get to untangle the webs in your mind and if you don't know where to look um, you can look on the back you can call the number on the back of your card tell them what your coverage is and they'll give you a list of what your health care um, provides uh, covers you know and, and you know, I think a lot of people forget like what they put in themselves you know affects how you feel like how your body feels, right? But your brain isn't going to be happy if your body isn't happy, right? Yeah. Because you're going to, obviously, you're not going to be aggravated or irritated or you're uncomfortable or whatever it is. And, you know, like the first, first, first step to mental health is, you know, starting the right road on physical health. And, you know, that's like exercising, right? Getting those endorphins, take care of your muscles, take care of your, what you have left, you know, in the instance of being paralyzed, like you got to make sure you use what you got because, you know, it's all you got. And it's really important to take care of it, cultivate what is there. But on the flip side of that is, you know, what you put in your body too, um, you know, affects everything, particularly for us from bladder health to, you know, bowel care health to you know, just health, health in general, and keeping yourself out of the hospital, keeping your immune system strong, keeping yourself, you know, in a good space, and, you know, that, you know, means a good mental space. So, yeah. all really feeds what you said, so that's a really good point to bring up. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it's pretty much all combined, you know, like, everything, the exercise, the mental health, the diet, like, it, you can't have one really without you know like benefiting the others yeah. so like actually like it just it's all helped it's like it just it's things to take care of yourself and the, the mental health is such a big aspect of it and like you were saying with the confidence and everything like that helped me so much in the beginning getting my independence having the confidence to go out feeling good about myself playing sports playing rugby you know like gave me this whole new confidence i had after my injury and just mentally really took me to another level like that when I was struggling in the beginning, so yeah. Just. Yeah, I think how you like relate to yourself is so important. I think we don't pay attention sometimes to our like inner dialogue and how we feel about ourselves, how we relate to ourselves, you know. And uh, it can be like a very slippery slope into a rabbit hole. And um, yeah, I, I just feel like uh, um, you're not less than because you able to do certain things, you know, and I just, uh, I just want to spread that message to people who just, you know, um, don't feel confident, confident about certain things because of their and, level of injury. you know, I know I was really stuck in that kind of mindset for the longest time and, you know, we're all trying and, you know. And so it's never too late. It's, you so, we so often get in our own way. I mean, I didn't start doing adaptive recreation until 20 years after my injury. You know, until just a couple of years ago. That was after being moved down, after being down here, and after, like, discovering my independence. But, you know, like, I saw, you know, these guys out there in their rugby chairs doing, you know, the wheelchair basketball, over-the-line baseball and stuff. And, uh, and at first, like, I almost, like, got intimidated and a little scared and a little weird and nervous. Like, I'm not even sure I should be out there. Like, I've never done this stuff. Like, you know, here I have, like, 20 years, you know, injured. But... Um, you know, I got out there and like that feeling of, you know, participating and, you know, moving my body and moving muscles that I, you know, hadn't moved because I hadn't played this sport, you know, like just being out there and participating. But um, it it was life, really, really, really incredibly life changing. Um, so don't don't let that fear and that trepidation and stuff get in your way. Um, don't wait. Um, because when you finally do do it, you're gonna be like me and kicking yourself. You're like, what the heck was I doing for the last twenty years, not doing any of this I stuff? Was so you know? Four years, I missed out, you know. But but also sometimes people kind of have to go through that. Yeah, um, it's traumatic what happens to us, and you know, a lot of people are processing. And I remember I couldn't look at pictures of myself, my old yeah. pictures. You know, it was too painful. And I think I'm so proud of the person that I. Built. I mean, like I've worked, put so much work into, you know, and 
I've blossomed into and it's just you know it, it's uh, it's liberating I think yeah you know but um, one of the things like that really helped change my life in a positive direction though was seeing guys like Bobby and Sean you know, out there and doing their thing you know like doing you know super I call it super quad stuff you know like pushing around in the non power assisted manual chair and things like that you know that like inspire me um, that you know I see that you know I see Sean out there doing his rugby thing like you know as like a quad but you know playing a hundred times better than I you ever thought I could but knowing like seeing that you know it's like dang if he could do that like I could totally That's do so that possible. you know and it's inspiring like it sets that fire and like you know it tells yourself like you know you can because like you know it's like if they can then you know like oh I know I can you know exactly. um, and that you know really um, was something special for me that you know I only found through you know getting out there and participating in adaptive recreation like that yeah, like, yeah. Like, we have, um, before we get going do we have any questions Sean? yeah so, so I was gonna also say that um one one question we have actually from Brandon um, is he has really really low BP so it's really hard for him to work out. He can only do short reps, and then he starts to feel like he's going to pass out. So I don't know if we have any tips or anything for him. I was going to suggest wearing a binder, because that used to help me a lot in the beginning, to wear the ab binder, um, or you know the um, leg, the leggings um, also can help, both, anything just to help. Yeah, like compression leggings. Yeah, the compression leggings, just something to help boost the BP. And try not to... Uh... Try not to uh, work out right after you've eaten something sometimes. Yes. I don't know with a lot of quads, oh. after they've eaten a meal, they're like, ooh. Yeah. You know, so I try not to eat too much before I, I work out. I know they say to try to get something in you, but I got to be really careful what it is. Yeah, we all have yeah. that BP issue, and food is another thing that factors it in, like you're saying, like your digestion starts to affect it. You know, if you're if you're hungry, you'll start to get the low BP. You're weak, so like right before yeah, you eat, right I, after I, you eat. I'll get like hypoglycemic, you know, from just like going out, you know, like not doing my breakfast thing. And I'll be out one or two o'clock or all around, and I'll get like a huge low, like energy low, like my blood pressure drops, my energy drops, like everything does. And like I gotta race to my bag to get my, you know, trail mix pack or my, you know, um, kind bar so I can chow down real quick and you know feed my body. But that's a um, big part of like learning how learning how it all works. Um, you know, honestly, if you do really really struggle with blood pressure issues, working out, make sure you work out with someone. This may be an instance where, mm -hmm. if you can, get into some PT where, you know, they can monitor you and, you know, or, like, help yeah, set exercises for, you know, for you until you're stronger and your body's more adjusted, which will happen over time. Um, and talk I, to your doctor. And talk uh, to your doctor. I'm sorry, Tammy. Yeah. Make sure you talk to your doctor if you're having blood pressure issues. You know, maybe that, all kinds of different stuff. Um, one trick I learned is that I mix water, I, I like ice water and I mix Pedialyte because your body needs salt, you know, and, and we're That's always low on blood pressure and salt, and also your muscles need to retain water, there's not enough salt in your body, um, it doesn't retain the water, so I always make sure to work out with Pedialyte, ice and water, because it cools me down too. My favorite was Pell. I'm you know, drinking that right now, Tim. My electrolyte yeah. drink. Yay! <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I drink, uh, you know, what my doctor said because I have uh, low sodium. You know, try not to drink free water. So free water is just water with nothing. So I buy some hydrator pills. So I drink one with a hydrator, one with a Pedialyte because you don't want to overdo it on the Pedialyte. And then I also do them one free water. Because I, I, I can't do the ice water, Tammy. I, I have to have hot water. So um, one good hot water. I love love my hot water. I love hot water during winter. But um, during summer, I do burn up sometimes because of nerve pains. But I do like those Vita-C packets, the electrolytes. And, but I find that Gatorade has so much sugar, so I, I worry about that too. People yeah. often forget that part of a healthy diet is hydration. Drink, yep. drink, 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 drink. It is the most important thing for everybody, but especially quadriplegics. It's important to flush that bladder. As much as it sucks having a cat and empty that leg bag, it's worth it if you're not having infections. And it helps with everything. It helps with bowel care. It helps with energy. It helps you feel better. Drink, drink, drink. Yeah, do you guys, um, sorry, uh, do you guys flush 
Do you guys have a catheter? Um, oh, yeah, so we that. did the catheter episode, which you can check out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We had it. We did an episode on it a couple weeks ago. Oh, uh, Sean has a super pubic. Bobby, you have a super pubic as well, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I have a I intermittent calf, but I have a catheterizable stoma in my abdomen, like uh-huh. right in my belly button, which I cat through. And I have to flush that every morning. Um, yes. I mean, I can skip a morning, but like I irrigate every day or every other day. I irrigate and flush my catheter every other day, my super pubic. I flush mine every day. I think I'm a little paranoid. I, I get what's called a cystoscopy every six months. Are you guys familiar with that? Yeah. I've had yeah, I get several. those ones. And uh, it's just routine, you know, just like our routine checkups. Um, he just goes in and puts that cage in and pulls out all, like, the little stones. And uh, and I flush every day with renaseed and flush so it breaks up whatever stones I have so that it doesn't go to my kidney. Is that why you, like, you do struggle with bladder stones a lot? I had it once, and I was AD. And I, I, try, to, I try to tell Quads this. Um, sometimes you really should go get a, a scan that it's not stones because I kept AD and I thought it was a UTI infection. And you know how when they... Um, Take your urine sample. There's always a, a bacteria. Always some infection. little bacterial infection. So they assumed that it's a UTI. They kept giving me uh, what's it called um, pills, and it turns yeah. out I was hospitalized this one day. And they had to take um, an X-ray of my gut because I was backed up, and they're like, "Oh, by the way, this jelly bean thing is like a stone. You got to go get it removed." You know, and from there I learned of how to take care of my calf, why I was OD, why it's important to flush. And, uh, yeah, so, make sure it's not a stone. We'll have to have you on for our next catheter talk. I'm sure we'll have to do plenty of bowel and bladder talks. That'll be like every yeah. other month uh, yeah. discussion. Yeah. <laughs> That's important info. Are there any more questions, Sean? Yeah, um, so I got one more question on um, uh, how much protein to use, especially because 85% of our muscles aren't working. Like, how, is there too much protein? Um, or anything like that. I eat a ton of protein personally. Uh, I do protein bars and pure protein bars. They're like 20 grams of protein and like two grams of sugar or something like that. Um, a steak every day might not be okay, but you know, a couple well, of cups of nuts. I do them with workouts. Probably, <laughs> uh, you know, find oh, a challenge, find a happy medium, you know, what works for you. Uh, you know, find the protein that you like to eat. And for some people that's just powder and a shake, you know. Um, and I don't think, you know, you can overdo it on the protein unless you're, like, eating a ton of red meat to try to get it or something that might affect you in an adverse way. But, you know, I think, like, a regular standard daily amount for, you know, someone who's not um, paralyzed would probably be okay. Uh, just be mindful of the source you're getting it from and how it affects you. Yeah, and I think, uh, I think, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, do what you feel is right for you. Um, so when I was working out like a fiend, yeah, I'm going to do the 30 grams protein, you know, uh, protein uh, powder shakes, you know, 30 grams, but I'm not working out as much, so I'll do a nine nine gram uh, protein bar and then have a sensible protein in my diet, in my food, and, you know, um, and Tom, if I could, I would do the steak every day, but yes, you're right. I, you know, so, some you're not going to want to eat every day, but if yep. I, I would eat a red steak every day. It's a lot day. of red meat, though. It's so funny because red meat, for some reason, just does not agree with me. I mean, I love a cheeseburger or even a good, like, steak like anybody else, but I always struggle, like, the next couple of days and having to deal with the aftermath of it for whatever reason. You know, another good thing I, I tend to use a lot in my diet or my foods is uh, turkey meat. So I make a lot of turkey powders, free turkey. turkey powders. Uh, we make our meatloaf with turkey meat, you know, so it's it's just a it's a better choice than using red meat, you know, hamburger meat for those kind of things. So I make meatballs out of them. So for our spaghetti, um, you know, we use a lot of uh, turkey meat. So I love Hamburger Helper, right? But I wanted to do Hamburger Helper without their hamburger. So I did ground turkey and I took like cut up some carrots and like some onions and put it in there to like add some veggies and made yeah. a little veggie turkey helper and it was so good. It was like better than the hamburger helper. I might have to be like, what are you, five Tom? <laughs> hamburger helper. I, think I haven't heard that in a long time. Yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, it's just my adolescence. Hamburger helper's good. 
Hey, I got I one her. quick question for Bobby on your uh, awesome antique wheelchair. They were just asking oh, yeah. where you found that or. Uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, oh, like, I don't know, 15 years ago, I was uh, selling catheters, and I went to somebody's house to, you know, to sign them up, and in his house, he had a, you know, bunch of collecting stuff, he was restoring a motorcycle in his living room, and just like a whole bunch of stuff, and I saw the wheelchair, and I'm like, that is really cool, and he goes, yeah, I just restored it, redid the wicker on it, and just, you know, uh, gave it new life, and I'm just like, whoa. If you ever find another one, let me know. I'd buy one off you. And he's like, you want to buy that one? And I said, sure. And I go, how much? He goes, how much do you think it's worth? And I said, uh, 200 bucks. And he goes, deal. And he wheeled it into my van. I got in my van. He pushed it in. That's and so it's awesome. been here with, you know, ever since. So during all these, I run a lot of Zoom meetings through the week for support groups. And I'm like, I had a bunch of my uh, old supplies, or my supplies, you know, my catheters and all my uh, uh, just junk that was just sitting in that corner. I'm like, you know how uh, people like to spruce up their backgrounds. I'm like, you got to do something back there instead of all my crap. And uh, so I decided to put the wheelchair as a conversation piece. Have you ever tried pushing it? No, no, but I always wanted to, there's a TV show in the mornings, uh, Let's Make a Deal. And I kind of wanted to go on that, uh, let's make a deal where you have to dress up. And I want to be uh, uh, Brand the Broken, Brand the Broken from Game of Thrones, and wear like nice. a fur coat and just like, sit <laughs> there and like, you know, Brand the Broken. You're good, Chad. Flip and Bobby. That's that awesome. Would be no, I awesome. Never, it, it looks like it would be really hard because to get into because the wheels are all, the big wheels are up front. Yeah. So you would have to get in sideways, and I'd have to have two people with me in. Yeah. I wonder how many pressure swords were uh, obtained in chairs like those back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine a few. Rita um, passed away. Pressure swords. Do we have them? Were, were you asking if we have pressure swords, Danny? Or? I have a small one on my foot right now. Oh no! Yeah, right above my big toe. It's like just stage two. It's just like a little shallow, and I'm like taking care of it. Um, I have an awesome like caregiver in the morning. It's like wound care specialist, just by happenstance. Um, but still, it happens to everybody. I think it's important to make sure to take care of it. Yeah, you always gotta take care of yourself. Besides the exercise, health. You know, you gotta make sure your body is. In good shape, pressure sore. And also and make sure exercising out. doesn't, you know, and lead to injury or do it right, do it safe. If you're going to be out of your chair, you know, on a machine or something. Be mindful of stuff like that because, you know, all it takes is a bad one that could put you down and out for two more months than you'd like anybody would like. And when we talk about protein, the best thing for pressure sores is protein. Yes. You know, besides some of the care that you have to do for it that the doctor might give you but your best intake is protein and there's a great uh, great thing you can get on Amazon called Prostat P-R-O-S-T-A-T it's like uh, it's a syrup almost like I would say you just have to take a shot in the morning it's got 30 grams of protein but it's supposed to wow. give you something to help fight the wounds pressure wounds and it says it right on the bottle uh, a couple years ago after I dealt with a battle of pneumonia I coughed so much that I sheared my butt open and I freaked out and I had a stage three probably almost between two and three I you know I don't I caught it quick so I got on it but they told me about it and I just started ordering it so I drink it uh, I can't drink it when I don't have one so it's like it's not bad, but it's not great. So I'm just trying to wig it down. Like it's almost like cough medicine or something. But it's a uh, I, I recommend it for anyone that is dealing with uh, a pressure sore uh, anywhere on their body. I had uh, Good to advice. get a had to get a flap surgery uh, in I feel like five years ago, and I ate a lot of eggs. And prior to uh, waiting for my surgery. Um, 
I used the electrode stimulation. I put it around my bottom, and it, uh, it helped stimulate blood back to the, the, the wound. I've heard that and, before. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what my guy says. Like, he's like the... Uh, I mean, on top of protein, Bob, Bobby, which you probably raised, like, it's the blood flow. Blood flow is the most important. Like, blood flow needs to be getting to that area. You know, like, for my toe in particular, my circulation is so poor, you know, on my legs and, you know, like, at my further extremities. So, you know, it's, like, really important that, um, you know, elevate it at night, you know, take the proper precautions to, like, promote better circulation. Um... Oh, that's good. Good advice. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Good uh, info. Yeah, for sure. It was really good info on everybody. Uh, I was trying to look through for many more questions. Um, uh, we had uh, Mason asking you. I think you actually are, no, are friends with Mason. He knows you, Bobby. Uh, but he's asking what you're using now for your regular, your manual chair. What kind of chair do you use? And Bobby is the only quad I know, C5, that does not use any emotion, no nothing, <laughs> and has for 30 years. <laughs> I've been using the same wheelchair for 20 years. It's a, not, I've had a couple different versions of it, but uh, it's a colors uh, wheelchair. It's a Zephyr. It's custom made for me, and I know I need need to make a change soon. And uh, you know, maybe a little bit longer. My wheelbase is real short, or my seat is real short. And, you know, moving slower and. You know, it's harder to get over the wheels when I transfer, so I need to get something a little bit longer for me. But uh, yeah, I've been 30 years in a color or 20 years in a colors wheelchair, Zephyr. Awesome. All right, I got one last question that was asked about me and Bobby: why we keep doing the lean back, and that's another BP thing. So I look super fidgety, but it's a totally a blood pressure thing. Like if I sit too stationary, I start to get lightheaded. Like I start to get I. I just do, when I do the lean back, it just kind of helps. And every time I do that, like I, so that I don't lean all the way back, I have my hand under my desk or I use it in my rim. And Bobby does the same thing. He like holds his leg and does his kickback, but it's a blood pressure thing. Like we were talking about earlier it's with the low BP for quads. Circulation and raise your blood pressure, right? Yeah, circulation, my, back, yeah. um, my, my back starts to go numb. And when I lean back, I'll hear three cracks of my spine opening and it'll really like alleviate all like the pain and recirculate my blood you know when my back starts stiffening up my whole do you guys struggle with tone like i have a lot of tone you know rather than spasms i have a ton I of don't, tone i think it was a bad habit that i picked up when my blood pressure was really low all the time at the beginning and it's just like a bad habit i mean it, it's <laughs> Even if I'm fine for the day, it's just I I, I was the worst person to to have to be, to be confined to a chair and just sit. Please sit. And it's like, what do you mean sit? You know, I, I just can't sit. You know, and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, and I just feel like I got to move my stomach or a stretch, and it's just constant. And it drives drives people crazy sometimes when they're like, what are you doing all the time? And yeah. Especially if I'm at a restaurant and I go sideways. This is my favorite. I go sideways all the time. And then it's like a waiter's walk. I always want a waiter walk by. Just, oh, oh, I do sorry. the back. Yeah. I've, hit, I've hit waiters. I've like, my head's hit like waiters butts so far. I'm like, oh, oh sorry. They're back. I'm like, oh, my bad. <laughs> every, every quad that I know, every quad that I know does a quad lean. That's what I call it, the quad lean. And I do it too. I do it less and when I'm in my power chair and I'm like um, at an angle. Um, like sitting kind of more stable. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's for two. It's uh, for the blood pressure stuff and the circulation, I think. But also, it's like minor pressure relief for me as well. You know, like I lean over and move my body, and it's just enough to like lift my hips up a little bit and move me on myself a little bit. That like I'm in a different position when I go back. I'm just sitting a little bit differently. And like when you're sitting all damn day, like it is so important to move and move right. a little bit, even a little bit to readjust. You know, for the next 30 minutes or, you know, five minutes, whatever it is, you know. Um, so I think that's a big part of it, too. There's just little, you know, micro adjustments and positioning that, like, I do throughout the day. Yeah, that's awesome, yep. man. Yeah. We all, I think, have to do it. Tammy, where are you? <laughs> Sorry. I keep getting you off. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Oh, were you going to say something? Uh, did you have oh, a... no, no, no. I... 
<laughs> oh, okay, I thought you were going to add something, but yeah. So that's what, I mean, basically we all just have the blood pressure issue. It's definitely a, a quad thing or a higher level thing, even like higher level paras, I think, deal with it on, on some level too. So I even know ventilated quads that will tilt their whole chair back to get the quad lean in, though. Yeah, and you it's do literally, have, if like, you're a power yeah. chair, a lot, you can do the, you do the lean back and you can kind of regulate yeah. your blood pressure. Yeah. But, do you guys, um, or Tom, do you have the option to open up your back? Um, so I have tilt where the whole chair tilts and then like my back reclines, like so yeah. like flat, yeah. When I stretch my back, um, I mean Sean knows, I elevate my leg up, my leg up and then I lean forward and I stretch my back and I do workouts in my chair too. And very often like what I'll do is to lean forward or like I grab like the, you know, base of my chair, like the um, leg supports on either side of my like knees and just like lean forward. Yeah. And then forward side, I can just like feel that like little pressure relief like on the back of my hip, like my coccyx sciatica area, and you know like that's just like a, yeah, the little thing that I do. For sure. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, I love you guys. If we have anything else to add, um, I was gonna try to wrap it up, I guess, because we're out of about hour like, twenty. Our time for our we're, show, we're definitely going. Okay. To, but I mean, it's with all of us like talking. It's like I feel like it's a lot of good yeah. information for people, and um, we all have different never things. Die, and... so. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for having me. You know. For sure, thank you for coming on, Tammy. I really appreciate yeah. it. Go and everybody that's watching, check her out, Resilient Quad on Instagram. She got a website too, selling cool T-shirts oh, yeah. and stuff. So yeah, it's <laughs> resilient. Go buy that merch. I too. <laughs> she was plug. <laughs> Uh, no, that's what and it's no, for, for sure. Thanks, Sean, for, to lift the roll. <laughs> of course. thanks for setting this up, Sean. And yeah, I hope I uh, those that are going to be watching and, and have watched, hope they get something out of it. And I, that's, I think it's, remember, that's, I think, our story. Everyone's different. Make sure you talk with your doctor and also make sure you ask others and uh, see what they do and do what's right for you. That's, you know, what I can say. Whatever works for me might not work for Tom or Tammy. It's gonna it works for me and, and I don't always have the right answers, that's for sure. And, I and make, if anybody uh, does have more questions following up the video or, you know, like watching this later on and like want to message any of us, feel free to do so. Yes. Uh, we're all happy to you know, if not help us out help you out directly, you know, connect you to those who can or point you in the right direction to get the information you need. Um I think we're all more than willing and happy to do so, so don't hesitate if that's Definitely. the case for you. Yeah, and if you guys have any ideas for these shows or you have people you think would be cool for guests or something, um, you can message me, email me, leave it in the comments for this, or message me on um, Instagram, wherever. And like Tom said, you can message any one of us. Um, I know we're all pretty willing to help, so just, yeah. <laughs> Reach out if you're, if you're in need. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, so, you guys. Thank you guys for coming on. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Okay, Take care. And hanging out. All right, guys. We are here. Bye.